Hey guys, what's up? I'm here with another mastery tutorial. Sorry for the slow output of videos this week. I've been super busy. I've had four deadlines for different clients, uh, a lot of them new clients, which is super exciting for us. But also, it means I haven't been getting around to doing the videos. But I've been working really hard and I do apologize. Uh, I'm going to Tomorrowland tomorrow with uh, the Chainsmokers, which should be really fun. So I might make a vlog of that when I get back. Uh, follow me on social media and my snapchat is if I can hide that if you want to follow uh, that madness there it is from top to bottom for no apparent reason uh, so that is my snapchat as what is uh, you can follow the Chainsmokers adventure and the whole of Tomorrowland I'm gonna be backstage on the main stage so it should be pretty fun to watch if anything uh, so enough self-promotion, let's get on to the tutorial. So uh, today I'm going to skip the mat stuff um, and leave that for another day because I've not done many this week and so I want the one I do to be really fun. So what we're going to do is dive into the perspective area of the program and here you're going to find some of the funnest, um, most useful also uh, plugins that you can actually use in the program and a lot of them are overlooked. So um, what I'm going to do here is we're, we're going to come, uh, let me just shy this, I don't really need to see that. Um, so I might even lock it as well, just so I don't press it by accident. Okay, so let's look at bevel alpha first. So what this does is, as you can see, if I increase the thickness here and toggle it on and off, what it does is it takes the alpha information, i.e. the transparency, so if I solo this on, what I mean by the alpha is it mean, it takes the solid areas of your layer. So in this case with a text, it's um, inside the text. If I had this here, it would be, well, the whole of the layer really. So you would see the effect on the outside. I'll show you that in a second. So what it's doing is it's taking that information and if we turn it on, you can see it's then adding this kind of, it's trying to simulate light and darkness. So. Uh, as you can see, if we put the light directly above, we're going to have this kind of 12 o'clock shadow with uh, the darkness straight underneath and the light straight on top, which is kind of cool for creating this like 8-bit effect. Uh, super fun. You can increase the intensity of the light to make it really pronounced. Uh, I probably wouldn't recommend that, but uh, you can also tint the light as well. So if we make it slightly green, there we go. Increase the thickness. So super fun effects like I said if I cut and paste this onto our solid back here you're gonna see it's just gonna do it around the outside edges now the one thing with this effect is if I move it 45 degrees you'll see it's actually really ugly when you scale it super big uh, so I recommend keeping it super tiny about that big if you're gonna do anything else I would suggest using the following method which is bevel edges so if you drop that on here this does exactly what you would probably want um, bevel alpha to do if you so as you can see we're creating this nice thick edge and it's super cool for creating these like uh, 3d 8-bit blocks uh, the problem is that your layer has to be square now if I by what I mean by this so let's uh, let's make a polygon and uh, I'm gonna turn the stroke off and we're just gonna create this as a shape layer so I'm gonna create that now if I drop bevel edges on this you're going to see, so it's trying to do exactly this, but because the edges are cut off, it's just cut off and weird. In this case, I would recommend bevel alpha uh, and increasing the thickness of that and obviously the intensity. But you, you just need to know that uh, bevel edges is super cool, but it only works on square layers. So if I was to create a solid here uh, for this, absolutely perfect. I can create these little like fun 8-bit kind of platform blocks, like these Mario blocks, as I like to call them. Um, and you know, that's exactly what you need. Again, you can move the light around to so kind of animate that spinning, create this cool effect. Again, increase the intensity of the light, probably don't want to go too hard, but um, yeah, super, super fun effect and great for adding some interest to your flat and square layers. Uh, emphasis on the square there. So next up we have, uh, okay, so I'm going to create another thing. I'm going to drop cylinder on this. So CC cylinder allows, as you can see, I've already got a camera in this comp. If I press C, it will allow me to tumble around this cylinder, which is kind of cool. And you can move left or right. Now, as you can see, I'm limited by uh, the, um, 
edges of our solid here. So if I want this to be like uh, not cut off, I need to make it the size of the comp, which is the whole thing. And then we can see we're not having that problem anymore. So always make your solid layer the size of the comp so you don't have any clipping when you're moving around with the camera. So that's a quick tip. And as we can see here, um, there's you can change the radius, the position and that and the rotation shouldn't really matter too much if you're using a camera. Uh, you got the lightness, so this is like the material pretty much, so that you can change the look of it. Now when would this come in useful? Well to be honest, I would only use this if I was trying to create something like uh, a coat can or something like that. So if you have the texture of the coat can then you can just literally drop the texture in here, drop cylinder on there. And as long as you don't kind of pan past the um, top here, because you, as you can see, the top is cut out. So as long as you don't pan like too close to the top of the solid, you can get away with uh, quite a simple cook can. But uh, again, it depends. You're going to be limited in what you want to do. If you want to uh, go around to the top or the bottom, then you're not going to have the nice bevelling that a cook can does. So uh, just be aware of that. But that was probably when I was used that. So uh, let's also, I'm going to create a new solid again. And uh, no, in fact, I'm going to do this with our. Okay, so here I have a world map, as you can see. Uh, and if we drop CC Sphere on this, what CC Sphere does is it wraps the um, your layer into a ball. So this is super useful when you're creating planets. Now, this doesn't. So if I use my camera and press C, as you can see, this doesn't work with a camera. So all the all the options that you're going to want are actually inside the um, the effect here. So if we have CC sphere, you can rotate it that way. Obviously, you can probably rotate it this way, which is the way you're going to want to do it. Uh, you can increase the radius of your earth. So if you're going to do it, do it that way. You don't want to scale the layer up past 100% or you're going to get blockiness. So uh, always increase it there. And then you can change the light, you know, and make it a brighter day or make it you know, kind of dark on one side of the earth or whatever. If you're doing the kind of National Geographic kind of sunset shot, uh, you can increase the height of the light so you can make it kind of slowly reveal light all over the earth, which is the kind of generic effect you would use when you were doing. So you would have maybe, um, you would have the earth like down here and then scaled like super high and again the quality of this texture is going to depend on the quality of your image so just be aware of that and then you know you can uh, in the light height here you can slowly reveal the side of the planet so that's pretty cool and uh, here you have the reflectiveness and all that crap with these so you might want to have zero ambient which means this is completely dark when no light is hitting it so you can literally just do the thin reveal like so which is pretty damn cool right Okay, so if you're not into 3D, this is a really cool and fast way to create a world. So uh, that's that. Now let's move on to probably one of the, uh, actually let's do the drop shadows first. So these are super useful. I'm going to start with radial because um, radial is kind of slightly different to drop shadow. So what radial does is it attempts to create um, a shadow which is coming out from the point. Now, if that doesn't make sense, look at me. If I put the point of light in the middle, you can see the shadow is trying to move outwards. And so it's closer here. And then the further out you go from the point, the further out the shadow is going to be. So it's trying to be kind of semi-realistic. And, uh, you know, I, I take that with a pinch of salt because obviously you're not going to get super realistic shadows in here. But it's actually quite cool for creating a stylized effect. You can even have this glass edge which creates like a little um, glow around the outside there. And you can have the influence of the color, which is the color of your layer there. You can do just a shadow if you want to do that. And then you can maybe like soften the uh, the shadow by itself. So uh, you got the projection, projection distance, which is how far this is from the actual text. So uh, some super useful stuff there. And uh, you got the light source up there. Next, we got the drop shadow, which is kind of different in that um, you can stack these. So not many people realize this but uh the drop shadow by default doesn't look particularly useful like if i uh or doesn't look particularly realistic should i say so if i so the distance is how far you are from here but uh 
if I so if I do this uh, maybe just slightly softened and then you can do another one and uh, you can soften this even more so if uh, let's do both of these at like a hundred and let's just turn this like some shade of whatever that is olive I guess uh, we make these the same and then you can like slightly soften one more than the other and uh, get some kind of more realistic and you know you can just basically stack these as much as you want and maybe make the third one really soft and then so you can get some differing results and by stacking these drop shadows just like the glows when I showed you the glows you can get some interesting results now the last but definitely not least thing I want to show you is this so what I have here is I have a, a picture which I rendered out 3d and uh, this is just a uh, 360 degrees. So if you go into Google, you can search HDRI maps and you can get these kind of spherical maps. So the idea is that this perfectly links up with this. So if I uh, put this side by side with itself, uh, you, it basically loops seamlessly. And that's the whole point of these images is that from left to right, uh, they, they loop. Um, so this basically goes seamlessly into that, obviously not top to bottom, but left to right. And what this allows us to do is if we drop CC environment on it, now we're gonna see like nothing has happened. In fact, it's just gone dark and we're like, eh, what's happening? None of these will seem to do anything, but as soon as you turn a camera on, and if I press C now, you can see what, if I come into, you'll see that if I come into, um, let it go back. I could do this properly custom view uh, doesn't look like much is happening if I spin around you can actually see what's happening so it's created this giant uh, circle map and then your camera is actually inside this world so if I come back into active camera what this allows me to do is if I move this around you could kind of do uh, what I'm gonna do is increase the horizontal pan not the horizontal the lens distortion here so this allows you to kind of uh, see more what's going on. So this by default is probably not what I would use. I would, uh, so you've got probe or you have vertical cross. So, uh, sorry, yes, yeah, spherical is what I would use. Not Sometimes it goes to probe by default, but, um, and then horizontal pan allows you to create this cool effect, which is also kind of neat. Uh, you got some, I guess a kind of, uh, what's the film, interstellar thing kind of going on but what I would usually do is decrease the lens distortion to about here and then when you're moving your camera around so if I press C you could do a almost got a kind of like GoPro effect again I, f I still think the distortion is way too high there so maybe just like 160 or something and then you can kind of like just keyframe the camera so if I uh, had a wiggle to the point of interest wiggle let's say two times a second 50 pixels I can't remember if I've shown you it so, uh, so if I play that you can see we've got the kind of general wiggle you would have and you would probably want it a bit more pronounced so maybe a hundred and then maybe five times a second and this is going to be a lot more hectic but if you were falling you would probably have this kind of effect going on and then you know you can turn on motion blur and it's a super powerful effect so basically you can create um, just animate the camera so uh, just literally mo moving around and you can be like looking around and you can maybe even put like words like around so it looks like you're falling around some words you can see the possibilities of doing this because now that this is interacting with the camera we can use all the other effects that work in 3d space like uh, the 3d text uh, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make this 3d because I won't particularly know where it is but then you know just try making uh, 3d text and uh, messing around and obviously there it is and so now when we're moving around we could be like following around the text and you can see the potential for uh, how much fun this could be so uh, just get yourself a nice HDRI image if uh, you don't know what they are just search HDRI images and you should be able to find some nice one usually they're in the um, form of studio ones but uh, you can find some 
ones which are outdoors as well. Uh, also search for Sybil Images, Smart Image Based Lighting, which are also used in 3D. And they're kind of the same. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Bit of a long one today, but uh, hopefully some super fun stuff. And I promise I will pick up the regularity of these videos soon enough. Thanks for watching as always. Please like, comment, subscribe. And follow me on social media if you would like to do that. Especially this weekend on Snapchat. It might be interesting. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.